Hello. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but um, we uh, are just coming to the end of November here, and uh, obviously Black Friday season meant a lot of war game. So we're on sale at various publishers, and I just want to do a quick uh, recap of uh, some of the new stuff that's entered the collection um, because of it. The reason you're looking at a white box right now is because this is one of the items I picked up in the GMT sale. Um, GMT's yearly sale is amazing for picking up games that maybe you didn't P500 because you weren't sure if they're going to be any good. There's an example of that uh, in, in my stack that I'll show you in a minute. Or if you forgot to P500 a game that you knew you wanted, again, another example in my stack that I'll show you, or, um, you know, uh, accessories or other things you've had your eye on for a while. And that is what this is. This is an empty white GMT three inch, three inch box. Um, you can't beat the price when it's 50% off. I think it was $4, something like that. Um, and the reason I got this is because I have a bunch of magazine games that I would like to not leave loose and I would like to store. And so I can fit a bunch of them inside plastic bags. Uh, into this box, and uh, so that was one of the items that I picked up. I also picked up a new stack of counter trays, always need some of those. Um, but let's start with GMT. So um, I, uh, over the last couple weeks, I have gotten a chance to play some games by GMT that I actually didn't have pre-ordered, but ended up really, really liking. And the first of those is Downfall, Conquest of the Third Reich. I got a chance to play this for the first time uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago maybe, and it is phenomenal. Um, you know, I you may have seen this appear in some of my GMT Weekend at the Warehouse videos where John Butterfield is doing play tests. Um, the game is superb. Uh, it's just so smart and, and elegantly designed. Um, it's got all of those Chad Jensen hallmarks with um, a lot of great... Uh, visual communicative visual information in the game and I really like the initiative system I keep telling people what if World War II had Takedo's turn structure um, if you've ever played Takedo it uses kind of the same thing where if there's a track and if you're the furthest back on the track you get to take your turn so it does that. Um, it makes the game really interactive, uh, back and forth. There's always something you're going to be doing, especially because you're playing, uh, you know, either the West and the Eastern Front Germans or the Soviets and the Western Front Germans. Um, it's got a really interesting. Um, like dynamic system for like how your attention is shifted between the fronts based on which faction you're playing. Um, I, this will probably be in my top 10 games of the year list and um, it had just come out and it was eligible for the P500 or excuse me, the uh, GMT fall sale. So 50% off 30 bucks for downfall cannot beat that uh, given how much fun I had playing this game. This is one I'm going to be coming back to quite a lot. Um, really great convention game. You can probably do, you know, the, the Husky scenario in, in a full day's gaming or the full campaign in maybe two days. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a fantastic package. Highly recommend. This will sell out. I, I, I look at this game as kind of like the Atlantic Chase of 2023 where suddenly word of mouth has everyone scrambling for it. I'm really glad that GMT uh, added the three inch box um, with the mounted maps back to B500 for a second printing. I will definitely be picking that up. I think the only thing that would make this game better would be, um, the mounted maps, um, and maybe a, a rule book that was more easily referenceable. But in general, this is this is fit, one of the top games of the year by far. So I picked that up in the GMT 50% off sale. And then the other couple of games that I picked up in the 50% off sale, one is not a game, one is an expansion, and it's Sovereign of Discord. This is the prequel expansion to Fire in the Lake. Um, I have uh, the, I forget what it's called right now, um, the one that comes after Fire in the Lake. Um, and I just, for some reason, forgot to pre-order this. But, uh, you know, Stephen Rangazas, who designed British Way, a game I really enjoyed, um, <clears throat> uh, did, did this. Um, there's a two-player 1961 and 1963 scenario in here, but you can also play it four players with the Fire in the Lake map and components. There's some new rules. What, what I think is really cool is this comes with some new cards for the Fire in the Lake deck that you just throw in the deck for even more variety in Fire in the Lake which is a game that I have played several times but have not played enough, um, and I would like to get back to it. But I think more importantly, and one of the things I would like to do is you can take Sovereign of Discord from 1961, play through it, have your finishing state set up Fire in the Lake, play through Fire in the Lake, and then you can play the second expansion, the one that comes afterwards, all the way through 75. So you've basically got 15 years of Fire in the Lake that you can play as one giant campaign from expansion to game to expansion. And I think that is super cool. Definitely makes this the biggest, most sprawling coin game out there. And it's already just a phenomenal game. So I picked up Sovereign of Discord. Um, you can see here, I'm really excited to 
see how this kind of changes. Um, and one of the other things I should mention is that the, the two-player um, action selection matrix, which I don't think is on here, um, you can actually use that for a couple other things. So it's kind of the same one that's found in Colonial Twilight, but you can also use it for the uh, two-player scenario that was in C3I for the Southern Campaign of Liberty or Death, which is a two-player variant to that game that I have not yet tried. But having the two-player turn matrix from this um, or the other Fire in the Lake expansion allows you to do that pretty easily. So uh, that is, is really cool. Okay, speaking of coin, the third game I picked up, People Power, Insurgency in the Philippines, 1981 to 1986. This came out earlier this year. This is a three-player coin game about um, sort of insurgency and unrest in the Philippines in the 80s, um, which is a topic that uh, I know nothing about. Um, I know more about it now because I did play this earlier this year, and I actually really, really like this game. I think it's really, really smart. I think a lot of people, when they look at coin, they see so many titles and like, well, they're all the same. Well, if I don't need any more. But every time I play a new coin game, I'm really impressed with what designers, in this case, Ken, Ken T, are doing with the system and adding to the system to make it really compelling. So in People Power, it's a three-player game. Um, here's the map playing uh, across the islands of the Philippines. What I really like what Ken T did in this game is he created these like new cards that give each faction sort of like a one-time benefit. So at the beginning of the game, you secretly select, there's, there's two sets. You secretly select sort of, they're kind of like pivotal events. You'll select one of those and you can deploy it during the game. And then halfway through the game, you'll also get to un to reveal one of your personalities for your faction that you've also chosen at the um, during the game that's secret. So no one knows what you've picked. And there's three different choices for the personalities and they all kind of do different things in the game. So this is really interesting strategic pivot point for every player as you're playing through people power um, that can kind of change the make the change, the sort of dynamic of what's going on. Um, but I really like that the game is, is short, so it says two to three hours here. I think once you played this a couple times, you could actually probably get it below two hours. Um, it's really, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's got some, you know, kind of like Cuba Libre, the map is small, not a lot of spaces, and so it's really tense. Um, and it's just, you know, it's about a period of history that's fairly recent that I would argue probably most Western gamers and historian or historical aficionados don't know a lot about. So I really like that it's a topic um, that will teach me something. And also the graphic design is really good. I love this sort of like 80s kind of uh, colorful uh, vibe. And I like the use of real photographs uh, for the cards and whatnot. It takes me kind of back to Indian Abyss and Distant Plain where you really got a sense of the, of the history, the recent history. Um, by playing the game. So don't sleep on this one. If you're a coin fan, but you've kind of been exhausted by the number of coin games that are out there, um, I definitely think People Power is worth a look. Um, I highly recommend you play it at the very least. It's, it's very tight. It's very nicely designed. I know this originally was supposed to be volume four back in the day. Um, and it's been in the work. It was in the works for a long, long time. I think a decade or so. Um, so I'm very happy to own this one. I actually think it's better than the Finnish Civil War one, All Bridges Burning, as far as a three-player game goes in this series. Uh, this is one I can see myself breaking out uh, quite a bit um, as like a quick convention game or, uh, you know, I want to play a coin game with friends but don't want to sit down for like a huge, you know, six-hour experience. So a little bit of, little mix there. So that's my GMT pile. We got People Power, we got Sovereign of Discord, and we got Downfall, Conquest of the Third Reich, plus some accessories. Um, very, very uh, excited to have picked this stuff up uh, for 50% off. Can't beat those deals. The other uh, game I picked up in a sale was from MMP, and this is one I've had my eye on since it came out last year. Unfortunately, it was not part of MMP sale last year, and that's A Victory Awaits, Operation Barbarossa 1941. Uh, this is by Tetsuya Nakamura, I believe. Yes, it is. Uh, same designers, Fire in the Sky, and also the other games in this series. I think there's a Victory Lost, and there's a couple other ones, I think. Um, this is a World War II East Front game. Oh, here it is right here. Victory Lost, Fire in the Sky, War Price Glory. Yeah, so it's a World War II East Front game. It's three maps. Um, and it chronicles basically Operation Barbarossa from 41. It's nine turns. It's a chip pull game. This actually uses the same system as um, some games from Revolution, uh, the Three Crowns game. So like Poland Defiant, Across the Narva, and um, Konigsberg. Um, so it's a really – if you've watched the channel, I've done some videos on those games. It's a really – like fluid playing system, um, very simple. And um, the scope of this one is what got me. So it's three maps. It's got the entire Eastern front for Barbarossa from basically Finland to the Black Sea. And um, what's cool about it is that you can actually play each of the maps independently. So if you just want to play that central map, of the central uh, portion of Barbarossa, you can do that. If you just want to play like the top and middle maps, you could do that as well. Or you could play all three for the entire thing. And because of that, it actually 
um, plays multiplayer quite easily as well. You could have three on three, a three on three game where each player takes a front. Um, there's some rules for that in here, but uh, this one, you know, looks really good, really quick playing. Oh, the other game that's part of the series is Traces of War from VUCA. So uh, th this and that game would actually be a good companion to each other. You've got Barbarossa 41, and then you've got the Soviet pushback in, in 43, 44. So um, a victory awaits. I'm excited to play this. I'm still clipping it right now, but um, this is a good one that I think we'll see the table, um, you know, probably solo, uh, maybe even play the all three maps solo because it is chip pull. So it's like pretty easy to do that. Um, so that was from MMP. Um, and then finally, um, this is where sort of the, some of the wallet hurt starts to come in. Uh, Revolution Games was having a sale and I picked up, uh, to pad out my collection of a system that I am playing right now solo for the channel. Look for it soon. And that is, uh, Blind Swords. Um, I've always liked Blind Swords, but I haven't really gotten into it in a huge way until I recently fired up, uh, a solo uh, doing a playthrough for the channel, Stonewall Sword, and I've been enjoying it so much that I ended up making my friends play Kernstown with me, which I picked this up in the sale. We played first Kernstown. That was a lot of fun. I just really love the, the chip-pull system of this game, even though I'm not a Civil War guy. Um, and because of that, I had to go pick up a couple of the other ones. So I also grabbed Grand Havoc, which is Perryville. I think this is the most recent one. Um, this one actually is one of Revolution's nicest uh, produced games. I, they're really upgrading their production quality, and Grand Havoc is a good example of that. Nicer counters, nicer rule books and player aids. Um, I also, the, the deals at Revolution are really good, so I also ended up grabbing uh, a Greater Victory South Mountain um, after meeting the designer at uh, SD Hiscon. He's working on the Shiloh game. And basically, I'm all in on this series now. You'll remember uh, back in February, I picked up Stonewall Sword and Thunder in the Ozarks for uh, five bucks a piece. Uh, that was a real good deal and really bit me, gave me the bug for um, Civil War Tactical with Blind Sword. So then finally the day was ours. I ordered that as well as his first bull run. Um, I really love this system. I tend to buy, you can usually buy these boxed or Ziploc. I tend to buy the Ziplocs just to save space. And what's nice about the Ziplocs that I really like, you can put everything that you need for the game in there along with a GMT counter tray and you've got all your units. Um, and so basically you just bring this with you wherever you go and it packs easily and you've got everything you need to play. And so I've done that with all of them. South Mountain in here. No, I'm, I'm busy clipping South Mountain, but uh, Grand Havoc uh, in here. Sometimes there's maybe too many counters for one tray. So you can see here, I bagged the shaken markers, but you know everything pretty fits and organizes pretty well with Blind Swords because it's all brigade and division based. So you can use one tray for all of the uh, brigades. Um, and then, yeah, Kernstown. So, like I said, I'm playing Thunder in the Ozarks. Kernstown's interesting because it's first and second Kernstown, and you have different orders of battle in each of those games. I played first Kernstown with a friend of mine. That's, a, I think, a really good intro scenario. Not very many units. It's pretty small, um, and it kind of shows you some of the basics uh, without getting too complicated. Um, and then second Kernstown is a lot bigger. I have not yet played that one, but you can see because of the number of counters in this one, first Kernstown is bagged in baggies and then we've got second kernstown and marker game markers there uh, in that so uh yeah that's um uh i've got what six of these now i think the only ones that i'm not going to get are um devils to pay which is tiny battle and the first day at gettysburg uh by revolution because i have a most fearful sacrifice and basically most fearful sacrifice has both of those uh, scenarios and days at gettysburg in there um and uh so there's kind of redundant to own those but there are some new um there are some new Blind Swords games coming out uh, next year uh, that I'm really... Chickasaw Bayou is one of them, and there's another one that Revolution should have for pre-order um, on their site at the beginning of the year. So I'm excited to get these to the table and play these. These make really great solo experiences um, and good head-to-head -head experiences. It's very rare that I find games that play equally as well solo and head-to-head. -head. You know, Usually when I play solo, they're missing something. Um, I would say that Blind Swords is one of the few systems that you could do both with very um, fulfillingly. Um, so yeah, so that is my, uh, that is my war game sale of 2023 pickups list. Um, let me know what you got and, uh, let me know if I missed anything that I, that I should have looked at. Um, I am probably done buying games for the rest of the year. I know that GMT is going to be shipping a bunch of stuff I pre-ordered, including Banish All Their Fears and Tonto Manta, uh, here in the next week or so. So hopefully those come in before the end of the year. Um, but otherwise I'm looking forward to the, uh, winter convention season and getting a bunch of this stuff played. Um, I will be back soon with that aforementioned, uh, Stonewall Sword playthrough and, uh, maybe some other stuff, uh, before the year is over. Bye.